Do you take your Holy Week seriously? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. The Bishop of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris during the early part of the last century was a great evangelizer who tried to reach out to unbelievers, scoffers, and cynics. He liked to tell the story of a young man who would stand outside the cathedral and shout derogatory slogans at the people entering to worship. He would call them fools and other insulting names. The people tried to ignore him, but it was difficult. One day, the parish priest went outside to confront the young man, much to the distress of the parishioners. The young man ranted and raved against everything the priest told him. Finally, the priest addressed the young scoffer, saying, Look, let's get this over with once and for all. I'm going to dare you to do something and I bet you can't do it. And of course, the young man shot back. I can do anything you propose, you white-robed wimp. Fine, said the priest. All I ask you to do is to come into the sanctuary with me. I want you to stare at the figure of Christ on his cross, and I want you to scream at the very top of your lungs as loudly as you can. Christ died on the cross for me, and I don't care one bit. So the young man went into the sanctuary, and looking at the figure, screamed as loudly as he could. Christ died on the cross for me, and I don't care one bit. The priest said, very good, now do it again. And again the young man screamed with a little more hesitancy, Christ died on the cross for me, and I don't care one bit. You're almost done now, said the priest. One more time. The young man raised his fist, kept looking at the crucifix, but the words wouldn't come. He just could not look at the face of Christ and say those words anymore. The real punchline came when, after he told the story, the bishop said, I was that young man, that young man, that defiant young man was I. I thought I didn't need God, but found out that I did. We begin today the celebration of the Holy Week, this sixth Sunday of Lent, which is both the Palm Sunday and the Passion Sunday. Yes, it is a celebration because it is the triumph of the Spirit over the Spirit that finally made Jesus breathe His last air on the cross. We commemorate not only the dying and resurrection of Jesus, but our own death and rising in Jesus. Jesus' victory enabled the execution of the saving purpose of God. It is also our victory today that God can draw good from evil, for His death brought the victory of the cross and its significance to every home today, 2,000 years later. There is this story of Constantius I, the father of Constantine the Great, who was the first Christian Roman emperor, Constantius I, who succeeded Diocletian as emperor in AD 305, was a pagan with a soft heart for Christians. When he ascended the throne, he discovered that many Christians held important jobs in the government and in the court. So he issued an executive order to all those Christians, either give up Christ or give up your jobs. The great majority of Christians gave up their jobs rather than disowning Christ. Only a few cowards gave up their religion rather than lose their jobs. The emperor was pleased with the majority who showed the courage of their convictions and gave their jobs back to them, saying, If you will not be true to your God, you will not be true to me either. As we go through this week, let us reflect on our own behavior and attitudes. Where in the past we used this week to take a vacation with our family and friends, to frolic in the beaches, and to hie off to the cool mountains for our r and let us use this time to also walk in the footsteps of our Lord. If we are to savor the taste of the triumph of the Spirit over our own frailties and weaknesses that tended to leave us in wretched anxiety, if we are to feel the assuring presence and peace of our Lord in our confusion, let us devote this Holy Week to making peace with God and our neighbor. Let us go through a meaningful reconciliation with our Lord through the sacrament of confession, and receive the sweet body of Christ in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Let us use the time in contemplative silence with fasting to understand our Lord better, His will and His purpose, our mission and our vocation in this life. Let us pour through the pages of our Bible to seek His messages for us more attentively. For the Holy Week is not an empty promise, it is an emptying of ourselves, so that the Spirit of our Lord will infill us and the Spirit of love will engulf us as we engage the Lord in a specially uplifting and meaningful prayer, fasting, and reflection time. May the Spirit prod us to serve others 
those in the fringes, and to love those who are difficult to love, where proof of our love for God hinges. Christ died on the cross because He cares. God cares. May we care as well deeply for our soul, especially in this Holy of Weeks, and be prepared to receive the undying love of God. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, may this Holy Week become more special for me as I emerge from this pandemic, knowing better now how to search my soul so that I will be able to find you waiting with a smile and with outstretched arms, saying, I love you, my son. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.